Amen. It's a wonderful scene to be in Ghana, in Kumasi, and ministry with fellow ministers and reaching across the globe. And I pray that this time together will be a time of renewal, of revival, of refreshing for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we well, thank you. We know that it is not by might, by power, by strength, it is by your spirit. Not by merit, but by your mercy and your grace, we're here. And we're asking, O oh Lord, you impart into our lives, into our ministries, into our profession, what comes from heaven and the only place it can come from to enrich our lives. Touch everyone this morning. Bless everyone this morning and make everyone without exception a channel of blessing to our generation. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Sid. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40. And we're reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. It says, As thou known, there's something we didn't know, we're going to know. And then it says, as thou heard, maybe something we've never heard, we're going to hear that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. We cannot dig so deep and go so high and search so wide and know the wisdom the knowledge and the understanding of the Lord. He tells us in verse 29, in verse 29, he giveth power. He giveth power. That's why we're here this morning. You are going to have something in your life yeah. and in your ministry. The thing you didn't have before, if you were powerless, your day of power has come. Yeah. If you were weary, your day of strength and refreshing has come and if you worry about like Elijah there's no point going on I'm not better than any of my fathers any of the uh, former prophets and so let me die you are about to start a new level of life because he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength in Bastachi it says even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But in verse 31, verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They are the people that they will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. I thought that was only talking to the young people until I realized that, you know, Caleb was even, uh, you know, older than I am. And he says, I'm ready now to start running. And if you're as old as I am, you are younger than I am, the day to start a new height, a new level of this race, that day has come. Yeah. And if you are ready, because I'm still going to keep on running. If you are ready, you run with me. Yeah. If you are ready, you'll climb a higher plane, even from everything you did in the past in Jesus' name. Yeah. Ghana will be turned completely and fully unto the Lord. Yeah. And 
everyone around you, everyone beyond you that, you know, they, they say they are all right, but you know they are not all right because the fullness of the grace of God has not been registered in them. You are the agent of the Lord, the messengers of the Lord, and you are going to take the fullness of the word of God onto our people here and everywhere in Jesus' name. Amen. And it says, you will run, you will not be weary, you will walk, and you will not faint. Amen. I need a better amen on that one. Amen. You know, when you, sometimes when I was, you know, much younger, and, uh, you know, I taught in the school, second, when I had four periods to teach, and I teach this standing upright on the board, and then I be on the bell rings, and I go to another. By the time I did four lessons, look at me, I would need some rest. But now, after so many years, I preach one, I preach two, I preach three. <laughs> and then they said, Pastor, we didn't schedule this one, but can you take a fourth one? I said, I'm here. I'm ready. Because now I run and I walk and I preach and I minister and I'm not weary. Yeah. You will not be weary. Yeah. Your strength will not fail you when you need the strength. Yeah. You will stand. You will walk. You will preach. You will pray. Yeah. And God will answer your prayer. Yeah. We started on Thursday. When did we start? Yeah. Tell me now. Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today is number five. Our people will tell you, but don't tell them. I will tell them myself. When we used to have, we still have retreats, but we used to have Easter retreat, December retreat. And we start, we start on sometimes Thursday, then Friday. By Saturday, my voice is gone. By Sunday, I say, I thank God we're finishing today. <laughs> because my voice has run away from me. My strength has run away from me. Now we're at day number five. And my voice said, as long as you want to preach, go on. I have permission from heaven. I have permission from my voice. I have permission from everyone. Go on. Now you have the permission of heaven. You will go on. Amen. You will preach on. Amen. And you will progress. Amen. I said you will progress. Amen. We're looking at the message this day. Readiness and renewal for Christ-like penetration in ministry. Not just ordinary penetration. Penetration in ministry. And I'm so happy you are the candidate to penetrate this land. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at renewal and regeneration to be Christ-like in ministry. That's the emphasis, to be Christ-like in ministry. Number two, recreated and recommissioned by Christ for mastery. By Christ for mastery. And, you know, I met uh, one of my, you know, spiritual children uh, recently. And I said, uh, what do you do? He said, I do this. He said, that's not all, Pastor. I do this. I said, that's not all, Pastor. I do this. I looked at him and I said, you do this, you do this, you do that. And you look like an expert in every place. He said, sir, before I had you. I used to think jack of all trades, master of none. But you were preaching and you said, John, not Jack now, John of all trades and master of everything. Yeah. And I took that and I accept that. I said the old statement, jack of all trades, master of none, all that is gone. Now I am the John of all trades and master 
of everything. What you hear today will change your life. Yeah. Will transform your life. Yeah. And so you are recreated and you are recommissioned by Christ for mastery. Number three is refined and rebuilt. You are refined to rebuild what Christ, our master, our model, our maker. He'll do it in your life. Look at number one. Number one, it's renewal and regeneration to be Christ-like in ministry. He wants to make us like himself so that we are Christ-like. And let's look at that again in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord. You know, if you learn to wait upon the Lord, you can do a lot that you never thought you could do. You can get to places you never thought you can get or you can become another man, another woman, another prophet, another preacher, another, another, another pastor. You can become another personality. All it takes weight upon the Lord. And then it says they shall renew their strength. Anytime you feel weak, don't just keep on running. Stay. Stop. Go and wait upon the Lord. Anytime you feel discouraged, wait and turn to the wait upon the Lord. Anytime some of the old ideas and the weaknesses and the idiosyncrasies of the past, they are coming back. Don't know, say, why this now? Why this now? I've done this, I've done that, and I'm still like this. Wait. Wait upon the Lord. Renewal will come upon you. A new energy tonic will come into you because they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Yeah. Is that possible in your life? Yeah. You will run and not be weary. You will run, you will not be discouraged. Yeah. You will not be disheartened. You will not say, I can't go on. You will go on. I said you will go on because when you wait upon the Lord and you renew your strength, then you will run. You are running this race that is set before you and you will not be weary. And it says you shall walk, they shall walk and not faint. Well, uh, you know all the scriptures I you know, want to read. I could read them. I could read even more than that. But the point is this. The reason we're waiting upon the Lord. We want to become Christ-like in ministry. What, how did Christ minister? And if we want to become Christ-like, what are the things that will be in our lives that we will see that now I am Christ-like in ministry. There are seven things I'm going to briefly go, go to. Number one, he ministered without fear or favor. You know, when you wait upon the Lord, and you are renewed in heart, in mind, before you're looking at the faces of the people, I dare not say that because of that person. I dare not go that direction because of that person. Then you realize Christ was not like that. Christ ministered without fear and without favor. Your day has come. Amen. Fear taken away. Amen. Favor. Do I say that to the sinner? Do I say that to the believer? Do I say that to the members of my church? What will they say? How will they look? And how will they handle me today from today? You minister like Christ. Amen. No fear. Amen. No favor. Number two, your minister will focus on freshness. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, when I was younger, and I, you know, had some preachers, by the time I had them uh, for six months, when they come again uh, and they announce their subject, I know the verse they're going to start with. I know the things they're going to say. I know how they're going to conclude because I've had them for six months. And there's no more freshness. And then sometimes you look at a minister, he's been preaching and preaching, and you're asking, what's the goal? 
course when I was teaching, especially in the primary school before I came to secondary, before I taught in university, we used to write what we call note of lesson. What is your purpose? What is your goal? By the time I finish this lesson, I expect and I work for the student, my pupils, to get to this, to understand this. Our teachers at school, they have a goal, they have a purpose. And when we came to high school to teach, we had a purpose. We're teaching this because they're going to take external exam. And we want them to do well in that external exam. We come as preachers. And what's your topic today? They give us, we say, what's the purpose? What's the goal? What are you focusing on? And what's the goal? They don't have any goal. And it's just today, Sunday, I have to preach. I just preach. No. Jesus Christ taught and ministered with focus and freshness. Anytime they listen to Jesus Christ, was still fresh because there's a lot from heaven to bring to the people. So as the Lord renews our lives and the Lord transforms us, we minister with focus and freshness. Number three, he minister with firmness and finality. As our minister, firmness and finality. If this sinner never hears any other person preach about salvation, I'm going to let him know this is the way of salvation. And it was final. And they could go anywhere, search anywhere. This message they hear from you has finality in it. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you are firm about it. Nicodemus said, how can that be? Will I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, marvel not. I say unto you, it was still the same thing. It was firm about it. Except you, except a man, be born. Except a man, 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 people, but now you. Except ye be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's the firmness. And this is finality. Except thou repent, ye shall likewise perish. Look at number four. Number four is that Jesus ministered with faith and forbearance. Faith and forbearance. Look at all his disciples, how they were not united, and who will be the greatest among us. And he brought a little child and said, look at this little, except you be like this little child, and you're humble, you will not get to the kingdom. Not even to talk about the greatest in the kingdom. But you know, he ministered to them with faith. And he still said, they will be the people to preach the gospel to every creature. They were here and there, they were vacillating, they were up and down, but he still had the faith that these are the people. And with forbearance, he forbore with them, he endured with them, he was steadfast with them. He didn't say this a bunch cannot do anything, they'll not achieve anything, brush them aside, drive them away, go back to your fishing, and then get another. No, he stayed with them. And even after he rose from the dead, and Peter had said, I go a fishing, and then he said, We we'll go with you, he went to them still there. When we become Christ like, that's what we do. We don't give up on people. We don't give up on our members. We don't give up on our neighbors. We don't give up on the people we're supposed to preach the gospel to because we preach with faith and we preach with forbearance. Number five, Jesus Christ preached freely and fully. Uh, come and look at Jesus Christ. He was sitting, you know, sometimes he stood when he preached, sometimes he sat when he preached, sometimes he'll be at the boat when he, he was free, he was free, he was not tied down. I must always stand up. If I don't stand up, the Holy Spirit, the, the anointing will not flow. I must always sit down. If I don't sit down, I'll not be well rested and then preach. He was free. Stand, preach, sit, preach. Look this way, preach. Free. He was free in his mind. 
It was, it was not tied up. And if we're going to preach like Christ, we must not be bound by tradition. You know, the people expect this is the way it should be. And then when I pray, I should kneel. When I pray, Jonah did not have a place to kneel when he prayed. It was in the belly of the fish. He didn't even know whether it was facing east or facing west. He said, all the things wrapped around me, and yet I lead my voice unto the God of heaven. I went astray. I forsook the way of salvation. Look at where I am now. When you preach, be free. Not frivolous, be free. It's not that you are superficial. Get to the word and let the word come freely out of you. Look at this. He preached fully. He preached fully. He preached fully. Uh, sometimes I listen to preachers and I agree with them partly. And I sometimes say, what do you even say? Because it's the word of God. It's true. Sometimes I'll tell the sinners, I'll say, come as you are. And people say, wonderful, wonderful. I had the pastor say today, come as you are. But they don't listen fully to the old message. They say, this one is sweet. I agree. It is sweet. Come as you are. Isn't that what he told uh, this man, Zacchaeus? Come down. Make haste. I must abide in your house today. How was he coming? He was coming as he was. But that's not the end. He came down. And the people said, Jesus Christ went to the house of a sinner. That's who he was. And he came just as he was. But you know, he didn't leave as he was. Give me a good amen. amen. When we preachers tell the people, come just as you are. And the people have an idea. We come as we are. We get saved. We remain as we are. And we're now born again. We're now in the church. We're a disciple. They follow us up. And we still keep on living as we were. No, no. Look at your current seat there. I brought one for you to look at. You know, this currency here. We have, is 200 denomination. We have the big six. And that side, if somebody gave you currency and you look at that, this is wonderful. But you didn't look at the other side, that the other side was blank. And the Jubilee house is not on the other side. And then you go about, you go about, you want to buy something, you tender your 200, uh, you know, donation. And the person who is going to sell to you is not only going to look at the side you are looking at, is going to look at the front side, is going to is that, what kind of currency is this? This side is blank. After you say you come to the Lord and you come just as you are. That's just one side. And then you don't look at the other side, and the other side is black. All you rejoice, I come as I am, I come as I am. And the other side of your currency is black. And then you get to the gate of heaven, and you say, what are you coming for? I want to enter heaven, and I have the currency to prove that I'm qualified. Bring it out, bring it out. And then you see one side, and you see the big six. You look at the other side, totally blank. What are you going to do at that? You cannot change it at that time. That's the reason why you preach freely, but you preach fully. Tell them the whole thing. Hey, look at this woman coming to the Lord. They dragged her to the Lord. And they said, Lord, we caught this woman. And we caught her right-handed. She cannot deny. What she, did she do? Then they mentioned what she did. And, uh, you know, they said, Moses said, stone such a woman. What do you say? He said, nothing. He wrote on the ground. Sometimes we say, sometimes 
were right. Sometimes it's what will say that will catch the people. Sometimes it's what will right that will catch the people. And when they saw what he wrote on the ground, they were all convicted and they went away one by one. And um, so Jesus said to the woman, what are those pen accusers? Have they not stayed? No, they didn't say. He says, neither do I condemn you? Everybody help me repeat that. <laughs> God bless you. And then the woman, if she didn't wait, and then sweet, I heard sweet message today. Neither do I condemn thee. He has only one side of the currency. He didn't wait to hear the other side of the currency and goes about and then I'm going to give testimony you know the, the things I had before they were bitter except thou repent thou shalt likewise perish but you know I've heard a new message now this one is sweet neither do I condemn you my dear sister wait look at the other side but now tell me the other side tell me out aloud let everybody repeat that so don't classify the messages to say neither do i condemn you today the message is sweet and then come just as you are sweet look at the other side zacchaeus said Half of my goods I'll give to feed the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore for food. The man did not remain as he was. And then the woman, you're forgiven. You're saved. But go and sin no more. That's the example of Jesus. That's the pattern of Jesus. He preached freely and fully. Number six, he preached frequently and fervently. Preach frequently and fervently. Your heart must be in the ministry. Your mind must be in the preaching. Everything you're doing, your whole concentration must be there and you do that frequently actually when you do something frequently you master that thing you remember i will try to write the alphabet and the teacher will hold our hand whoever was trying to teach us how to write the alphabet and they do it slowly and we trace the alphabets and later we we'll continued, we we'll continue, we we'll continued, and because we keep on writing frequently. That's why, that's how we master the art of writing. And so we preach fervently, we preach frequently, and number seven, faithfully and fearlessly. If we're, if we're fearful, we'll not be faithful. If we're faithful, what will happen to me? If we're fearful, what will the reaction of the people be? If we are fearful, the people who are in the committee and they appointed me and they, they decided my benefit, my remuneration, my salary, if they are unhappy, what will happen to me and to my family? If we're fearful, we will not be faithful in the preaching of the word of God. But Christ Jesus, the Pharisees were there, the Sadducees were there, and all the, they were watching him to catch a word from him. All the same, he said, everything he ought to have said. And by the time he was given, he said, Father, I thank you. I have finished what you gave me to do because it was fearless, it was faithful. And the Lord wants us to be like him. When you wait upon the Lord, it will renew your strength. And then you'll mount up with wings as eagles and you'll be like Christ, you will be faithful. Amen. Like Christ, you will be fearless. Amen. And from today, in every part of this nation and everywhere you go, 
when you have the privilege, number one, fear is taken away from your heart. Amen. Faithfulness. Amen. Faithfulness. Amen. I'll be faithful. Where are you? The Lord will renew your strength. And everything that brings fear in your heart, the Lord will take away today. We're coming, to, we're coming to number two now. Number two, we're looking at recreated and recommissioned by Christ for mastery. Recreated and recommissioned by Christ for mastery. He wants us to be master of what he has called us to do. He gave them some apostles. The apostle must be fearless and must be a master of the ministry of the apostle. And some prophets, the times, you know, the prophets we have today, they're not like the prophets were had in the word of God. Moses, the prophet, to confront Pharaoh, that was a prophet. And then we have Nathan, Nathan to confront David. And then we have the prophet Micaiah, that Ahab said, he never says any good thing about me. His message is always hard. Pinching, pointing, penetrating. Those are the prophets we need, and those are the prophets that God says to us today. He gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists. Evangelists, those are the people that go to the regions beyond. They go beyond their local church. They go beyond their local assembly. And evangelists, true evangelists, does not get there and uh, say, Now, come, tell me here. What's the culture? What do they want to hear? The other evangelists that have been coming, how do they preach? How do they, you know, tell me, tell me, help me, so that I don't offend anybody. Ah, you're not being an evangelist. Don't offend the thief. You don't offend the robber. You don't offend the smoker. You don't offend the drunkard. You don't offend anybody. You tell me, what's the major thing here that if I say that, the people are going to be offended, and the people will not invite me back. He's not an evangelist. He's preaching for himself. He wants them to have him back. What if Jonah had said, Now, God, you sent me to this Nineveh, and you tell me this message, yet... Forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I know the wickedness of these people. That's why I ran away from obeying this commission before. Now I come. Who are the, you know, the spokesmen and the key leaders in this environment? So I couldn't go and, you know, venture them and worship them first. And look at their facial appearance so that what I say will not offend anybody. That's not an evangelist. That's not an evangelist. An evangelist comes and he tells us, there's only one way to heaven, no two ways, and there's only one Savior, Christ. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. It is Jesus. And you remember they crucified that Jesus and Peter came and said, through your leaders and through your ignorance, you crucified the priest of life. And I come to declare to you that that one you crucified is the only way to eternal life. The evangelists of those days were just straightforward. And thank God your time has now come. Yeah. You are not wobbling for anybody. You're not fearful of anybody. You know, he renews us, he recreates us, he recommissions us so that we can become like Christ in ministry. You know, only 120 at the upper room. When they had all these qualities of Christ, only 120 went forth and they changed their world. We started 1973 with 15 people. 
what if I were to start again? And then I come and I relocate to Kumasi here. And then I have more than one twenty, and we say we're going to be like the early one twenty. 500, 1,000, 2,000, we're here and we bind ourselves together in the covenant of preaching the gospel. And I stay here with you and you stay here with me and I say, go here, go there, go there, go there and by the grace of God you go. Amen. Say, I go. I go. And then we now continue to preach the word to them. If 120 at that time could change their world, I think we can. Yeah. And Ghanaians are not only here. UK, find Ghanaian churches there. US, find Ghanaian churches there. I've not been to China, but I think if I get to China, Ghanaians are there. Yeah. Ghanaian believers are there everywhere. And if we Ghanaians alone, not to talk of Nigerians, not to talk of Liberians, not to talk of South Africans, not to talk of Zambians, not to talk of all the other countries. I believe we can take this saving gospel to the rest of the world in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, he renews us, he recreates us. Look at Isaiah chapter 43, and I'm reading from verse 7. It says, even everyone that is called by my name, everyone called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. He has not created you for the glory of your denomination. Whatever my denomination says, that is what I will do. I want to glorify your denomination. You know, as we look at the growth of the church, we see Martin Luther, and the Lord revealed to him that just shall live by faith. That's all he knew. That's all he knew. What he, for all the people of the Christians in the world said, this is what Martin Luther has given us, and was we'll stop there. No, when you see what Martin Luther has taught, there is a comma, because the ministry continues, the uh, the sentence continues, and then comes John Wesley, and John Wesley now is the same thing in the Bible. The thing had been in the Bible even at the time of uh, Martin Luther, but Martin Luther did not see that. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we added that. And somebody says, this is my denomination. The denomination of preaching holiness and salvation. And he follows that. And there uh, was Samuel Brengel. Uh, they also upheld the message of holiness and sanctification. But... The ministry did not stop there because Jesus said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be in deal with power from on high because ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and the uttermost part of the earth. And then so you now have the baptism in the Holy Ghost and the people continue, continue like that and they never knew about the gifts of the Spirit. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirit and the gift of faith and the gift of healings and the gift of working of miracles and the gift of speaking in another language, new kinds of uh, tongues, that is a ministry and in private devotion and also of interpretation and of prophecy. What if we just stop here? You're preaching, you're ministering for the glory of your limited denomination. But we look at the whole Bible, we look at the Word of God, and the Lord has given us the totality of the Word, and I will preach not for the glory of Martin Luther, the glory of John Wesley, the glory of Charles Finney, the glory of Paul, but now for the glory of God, and the glory of God will descend upon you. Yeah. 
the glory of God will descend upon this nation and upon all the nations that are connected when we know he has recreated us and he has formed us yea I have made him look at verse 21 in verse 21 this people have I formed for myself who are the people these people where are the people I said, where are the people? They are here. I'm happy to be in the midst of the people that are created for God and God alone. Yeah. And the people that will take the light of the gospel, the power of the gospel, the message of the gospel. And it's anywhere, anytime they wake up in the morning, anywhere they are, I am made for God. He has made me for himself. Another call comes. Somebody is calling you here and it's different from what God has called you to say thank you very much. It's something good and something great, but I have a greater thing here. God has called me. <laughs> say that again. And you live in that consciousness. And nothing will take the call of God away from you in Jesus' name. Yeah. It says, they shall show forth my praise. They shall show forth my praise. I'm going to look at seven things here again. Which shows that now. We are for the praise of the Lord. Because now, he calls us to mastery. And if I'm going to be in mastery, there are some things I need to master. There are some things I need to overcome. There are some things I need to conquer. Number one, fretfulness and previous fearfulness. You know, as we go through life, when we were born, I mean, as a baby, we feared nothing, not even fire. The fire of the candle, we're inquisitive. What is this? Want to put a finger there? We're fearful of nothing. We're fearful of nobody. You know, somebody comes and we look at their faces and, you know, they don't look like daddy and mommy. Why are they different? Then we look away from them and we look at mommy. And once we look at the face of mommy, whoever is there, whoever is not there, all fear is gone. How did we begin to have fear? Because the people were in the world before us. They said, don't go there. This will happen. Don't look at that. This will, will happen. If you see somebody having beard and she shouldn't have beard, that's a dangerous person. If you see this and that, that's very dangerous. If you go to the village, there are some people they call which is in the village. They are not here in our family, but if you go outside our family, that's what you will see. And they began to tell us stories and stories and stories, and those stories brought fear in our hearts. By the time we grow up, whatever college you went to, whatever certificate you have, whatever doctorate, paper you take in your hand, whatever research you've done in science or technology, the one they put inside us is still there. Fear, fear, fear. And now we're born again, but the fear they put in our heart is still there. Don't go to that tribe. Don't say you're going to preach there. Leave the other people who want to go and die prematurely. Leave them to go and do it. But you stay here. And you put fear in our heart. But you know, when you will become like Christ, all that fear is gone. What could you do if you had no fear of anything, anyone, any situation in life? What mountain could you climb? What river could you swim? And what distance would you cover if you had no fear of anything, anyone on earth? That time has come. Yeah. The angels surround you. Why are you afraid? 
Christ lives on the inside of you. Why are you afraid? He died for you and he paid the whole price of whatever you have done. Why are you afraid? Now we conquer that fretfulness and that the previous fearfulness we conquer them in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, we conquer failure and we conquer past fruitlessness. Failure and fruitlessness we conquer. Amen. I conquer. Amen. Uh, look at our, our uh, baby here. And, um, you know, she sees men and women, boys and girls walking and then sometime running and she has that desire that vision i want to walk i want to stand and the baby stands up and falls down but the baby does not give up stands up and falls down and out of that failure eventually that baby is able to stand without falling when you do something for the first time, it's like you're trying to stand. You may fail. You may fall down. The baby does not give up. You will not give up. Yeah. And then you try again, and you fall down. The baby does not give up. If the baby gives up, that baby will never walk. But you, you know, a little setback, I don't think I'm caught for that. I don't think I can do that. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you will do it. Yeah. I said you will do it. Yeah. We have to conquer failure and the past fruitlessness. Number three, we conquer falsehood and we also conquer preconceived um, falsifications. You know, people look at us and they tell stories about us. And the story goes round and round and comes back to you. When you hear that story and they attach your name to that story, you see, who wrote this? My friend, don't waste your time. You'll never know. Who said this about me? Brother, forget about that. That's what we call preconceived fabrications or falsifications. If you stay with that, you'll never do anything, but you're going to be greater than all those liars. Yeah. And the people who think, if you read this about yourself, you hear this about yourself, will falsify his character, will falsify even his motive. How do you know his motive? But he falsify everything. And when you read that, you say, I'm doing my best, and they make me and the worst of all men. I'm doing my best, and they make me the worst of women. You know, that will just make you to, to sit down. But, ah, brother, I didn't hear of you anymore. I'm tired, you know. No matter how fast you run, how high you jump, look at what they say. From today, you master that one. Yeah. What name did they call Jesus? They said he's walking by the power and the prince of Beelzebub. And they said, don't mind him. He has a demon. They've not said that about you yet. And Jesus went on and on until he got to Calvary. You will go on. Yeah. I said you will go on. Yeah. If you've written it in your diary, and I said on this particular day, July 7, 7, 7, 19, whatever, they said this about me. I'm going to prove them wrong. How do you prove them wrong? I sit down. I won't do anything again. I won't go anywhere again. You won't prove them wrong, but they said, we said so about that man. He now, he has got the truth of what was said, and he knows he was just, you know, moving on and on superficially. Now, he such that, do you misunderstand? You're sitting down. They will think they're like, caught you. 
Their lies will never catch me. Amen. For yourself, see for yourself. And so, don't allow the falsehood and all the preconceived falsification to stop you. Look at number four. Number four is fault finding and perilous fence building. False, false, a false finding. You know, God has given you a good ministry. Project that ministry. Do that ministry. Preach that word. But you're looking at other people. You're trying to find fault or then. When you engage yourself in a ministry that God has not called you to, even if you succeeded in it, you will fail in the one he called you to. God has not called me to the ministry of fault finding. How about you? You, know, you come to a new place and you know somebody says pastor before you preach I, I want to you, you know tell you something uh, that is a pastor they call this this is his kind of life that's an evangelist they call this in our land this is a kind of life and there is you know a leader in our place that's what they call his name don't associate with them don't get near them don't tarnish your ministry and so they prepare you not for the ministry of the preaching of the word you came for they prepare you for the ministry of fault finding and then you begin to build fence around you the people that will help you and take you to that mountain top and take you to that territory and take you to that other place you build fence around you because of what you are hearing wash off all the fault finders statements from your heart and be free and move everywhere you will get to the top in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh, look at number five here. Number five, uh, we're looking at this, and it tells us here, is to conquer the feebleness and the perverse foolishness. The feebleness and the, and the perverse, uh, the uh, perver faithfulness, rather, faithlessness and perverse foolishness. It tells us in John chapter 20, verse 27, And then said he to Thomas, Reach out here, reach thee them, thy finger, and uh, behold my hands, and reach hither to my thy hand and thrust into my side and be not faithless be not faithless amen, amen. but believing you see in our lives that faithlessness will try to keep in lord i believe but help mine unbelief and then we become foolish others announcing christ has come christ has come i want to see seeing is believing no believing is seen and what you believe you will see in jesus name yeah. number six we conquer feebleness and painful for future Feebleness. When you are feeble and you are a kind of um, downtrodden in your heart, everything is down. I, I used to know you. You are a cheerful person. Yes, preacher, a lot has happened between the time you saw me and today. And now I am feeble. And now I for, you forfeit everything when you're feeble. And Samuel told, uh, talked to Saul and said, Why have you done this? When you were elected and when you were appointed, you were taller than everybody. And your physique and your personality or even threatening some people. But now, why have you done this? He said, I feared the people. And because of that, I did this. He forfeited the kingdom. Always remember, if you're feeble, if you're fearful, and you do not do what you ought to do, God has more than a thousand other people that can replace you. I will not be replaced. I will not be replaced. 
But you know, if we're feeble and we cannot run, we cannot go where we ought to go, and, and God's work still has to be done. And He cannot be waiting for you forever and ever. You're feeble for one year, you're feeble for two years, you're feeble for three years, and you didn't remember what you heard. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You didn't go to the Lord to be near, and you're just there, you're just there. I pray you'll not forfeit your ministry. Amen. Today, while the power is flowing, today, while the courage is coming from above, today, while the unction and the anointing is flowing and touching everyone, get into that stream. And today, feebleness will be cancelled from your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Number seven is fanaticism and perpetual famine, fanaticism. Those who leave the Bible aside, they're looking for another source of power. And those who leave the fire of the Holy Ghost, and they're carrying strange fire. I pray we we'll drop all the strange fire. You know, anything Jesus did not do, anything Paul did not do, anything the apostles did not do, I think we're going to this, this, and that. And I say, my friend, what are you looking for? I'm looking for power. Power. No power in the word of God you read. Mm -mm, I'm looking for power. And then you have to go to Satan to get power to do the work of God. Satan. The enemy of God, they have to go to him. They have to do some rituals. They have to kill something. They have to dig the ground. They have to bury something there and cover it up. That's not of God. That's not of the Holy Ghost. That's not of Jesus. And they go to Satan. They go to idol worship. And they go to the powers of darkness. Fanaticism, and then they want to get the power to do the work of God. The work of God is not done that way. Throw them away. Repent of all those things. Burn them up. And when you do, the Lord himself will give you the power you ought to have in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I in Kumasi here, 1979, because when I started coming in 1978, I kept on coming, I kept on coming, while the crusade, and then we had, in the morning, we had seminars, and I'll preach there in the seminars, and one a man uh, had mental problem, mental challenge. He said what happened is, some years before that time, somebody wrote with red ink to him, and when he read that letter, immediately it was off his senses. And immediately, those who wrote that letter, they came to his house and they packed off every good thing that he had. In his house. They knew that once he read that letter, he was an unbeliever. Once he read that letter, he forget himself and forget everything. And so that morning, uh, after the seminar, he came to me. He could still talk and he could still remember what actually happened. But he was a nobody since that time. And he told me all the story. And I said, now, when that thing happened, you went to collect this, this, and that, and um, in your house for protection. Yes. I said, go back home. And when you get back home, repent. When you get back home, gather all those things together, burn them up, and then come back in the evening, and I'll pray for you. He said, thank you. He went back home, and then he gathered all the things together, the juju, the whatever, you know, you call it here, and lighted it, burnt everything. And every association with any evil thing, he burnt everything. Now, when I finished the preaching in the evening, I stood outside the hall. I was looking for that man. And good enough, he came. I said, did you do that? He said, yes. I said, let us pray. He said, no. I said, why? He said, when I burnt all those things, immediately all my senses came back. <laughs> what I wanted you to pray about was done you know 
when we do that and we sweep all the fanaticism away from us and the famine that had been in our lives, everything will clear away. Amen. That's why this morning I welcome you. Aquaba. You are here today. And now that you are here, all these things of the past, they are swept away. Yeah. We're, coming to, we're coming to number three now. Number three, we're looking at refined to rebuild with Christ, our master, our model, our maker. You will rebuild. Yeah. The church in this land will be rebuilt. The ministry in this land will be rebuilt in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, sometimes when our people come to give testimony, I understand, I understand, and I accept. That's where they are. And uh, they say, I came here today. And as I came here today, look at what happened to me. And then they will say, and you know, I am not a member of deeper life. Of what member are you? Are you a member of shallow life? <laughs> Tell me now. Are you a member of average life? Are you a member of superficial life? Now, deeper life, if you mean I'm not a member of the denomination of the local church, deeper life, I understand. But today, the Lord will even take you deeper than many deeper people. In your conviction, in your faith, in your ministry, in the power of God in your life, the Lord will make you deeper and deeper and deeper in Jesus' name. Actually, I must tell you, you know, that name, Deeper Christian Life Ministry. What did it bring it up? When I became born again, and when I started, at each even though it was a ministry at the University of Lagos, we started sending out articles that would transform lives, that would change lives, and lives were being changed, and lives were being transformed. The people there who read those things were sent out, and whose lives were taught, they were, the people say, uh -uh, this is deeper than what I knew before. This is deeper than what I got before. Other people who had been saved and they, they read those articles, they said, this is deeper. And you say deeper, say it. Deeper. You say deeper, say it. Deeper. And it came to our knowledge that they are calling those articles deeper. They are calling me deeper like they call you deeper. And then we said, okay, who are we? Then we decided what they say we are. They say we are deeper Christian life. And then we joined ministry to it. And it comes to you today. Whatever the other name of your ministry, of your fellowship, of your church, whatever the name I see you that today you are higher. Yeah. I see you that today you are deeper. Yeah. In fact, the people we normally call deeper life, and I'm number one in deeper life, and all the rest may be in Ghana here, our NO, um, Osofo Dodo. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he is number two. Well, some of you are going to go deeper than deeper. Yeah. You are going to go higher than higher in Jesus' name. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? It must be. Yeah. The Lord will refine you. Yeah. And the Lord will rebuild you. Yeah. And Christ will be your master. Christ will be your model. And Christ will be the maker of a new ministry, of a new life, of a new family, through you in Jesus' name. You will get on the television. 
If you're not there, you'll get on the radio. If you have not gone, you'll go on to the UK. If you have not gone, you'll go on to the US. If you have, if you've gone before, you will go again. With new power. With new strength. With new vision. Because the Lord will renew you today. The Lord will renew you. Three things we're looking at. We're looking at three things. Number, uh, sorry, seven things. You know, uh, three things. That's what I'm used to. But I can't come to Ghana and give you what I am used to. I have to give you something new, something high. Number one. Number one. Rebuild the temple with Christ. Rebuild the temple. What Christ, the temple is the what God has established, what God has done. And now in Acts chapter 15, reading from verse 16, it tells us, After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. And it says, Which? is falling down and i will build again that's rebuilding i will build again the ruins thereof and i will set it up the church in this land the temple in this land christ has come to rebuild and you are workers together with him we will rebuild in jesus name Number two, repair the tabernacle like Christ. Repair the tabernacle like Christ. Don't just go on. This is what we did before. This is what we're doing now. What's the difference between what you're doing now and what you did before? Let there be a difference. Come higher. Come up. And go farther than you have ever gone. And repair the tabernacle like Christ. Hebrews chapter 8, we're looking at verse 5, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, the tabernacle, the tabernacle for see said he that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount don't go back to the valley to find your pattern don't go to the people who are not strong don't go to the people who are not visionary don't go to the people who are not achievers to find a model of building the tabernacle gate on the mountain top on the mountain top with god wait upon the lord see the word he reveals to us today and see that you now build the tabernacle of the lord according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mount you were repaired you see, as we go back to our churches and we realize, we look at the lives of the people, we look at the, you know, their coldness and their weakness, and we look at, you know, all that is happening, and it's all the tabernacle we have, and we say, we're going to repair. In our preaching, we're going to repair. In our praying, we're going to repair. In the doctrines we preach, that will strengthen people and make them live a higher kind of Christian life. We're going to rebuild and repair. The Lord grants you the grace. Number three, number three is to restore the teaching of Christ. Restore the teaching of Christ. He spoke about, about repentance. Restore that. He spoke about righteousness. Restore that. He spoke about restitution. 
restore that. He spoke about one man, one, uh, one woman until death do them part. Restore that. He spoke about evangelism going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Occupy until I come. Restore that. He spoke about sanctification and holiness and he, he says we must teach all things and observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Restore that. Why did you stop talking about holiness? Why did you stop talking about sanctification? He spoke about his coming again. He said I tell you I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and take you unto myself so that where I am there you will be you will be also restore that he spoke about the rapture he spoke about the great revelation he spoke about his reigning he's coming back again he will set up his millennial reign he will reign restore the teaching of christ we're coming to number four reproduce teachers for christ not for denomination reproduce teachers for christ Teachers like Peter, like James, like John, like Matthew, like Paul, like Timothy, like Titus, like Silas, reproduce, reproduce teachers for Christ. The people that will take the message of Christ, the message of salvation, the message of holiness, the message of sanctification, sanctify them through thy truth that word is truth reproduce teachers that will be for christ look at number five number five receives temptation tenaciously like crime temptation will come now anytime we mention temptation there will be people that most people think temptation to immorality well resist that too but you know there's temptation to sit down instead of standing up there's temptation to run instead of looking back there's temptation to obey christ and to obey the word of god there's temptation that will say this is too much now Look at your age. This is too much. Not the other time you went there, you had accident. Have you not learned your lesson? The other time you went there and you had this, you had that. Have you, you know, not learned your lesson? That's a temptation. If you sit down instead of standing up, if you look back instead of looking forward, you have yielded to temptation. Temptation for money. You know, that, that person was my classmate. I even was brighter than him at the university, but now look at me because of preaching and pushing the gospel. I don't even have a good uh, vehicle that you, you know, take me where I need to go, and this one is bringing out smoke. What am I doing? I think I need to reconsider my choice in life. That's temptation. That's temptation. You will not yield to that temptation. <laughs> when people look down on you, you've done your best and you've gone everywhere and instead of you know people me shake my hand congrats praise the lord we had that happen we had that happen we had that happen they didn't do that you came back at home maybe you came back to your locality and the people and that's it that's it young man wasting his talent wasting his life and then when you hear that let me tell you when i finished at uh, the university in 1967 and I had first class. And my head of department was looking for me and came to my secondary school, but I was not around. I'd gone somewhere. And uh, they said he came for me because the university gave me scholarship to do PhD immediately. I didn't apply. I didn't apply. And it listed up a lot of things that, you know, I would benefit. And eventually, uh, my professor saw me and said, did you hear I came to your school? I said, yes, sir. And did you hear that we have given you scholarship to read PhD immediately? I said, yes. He said, when are you coming? I said, sir, I'm not coming. Number one, he was shocked that a young man could have an opportunity like this. And they said, everything is set for you. When are you coming? 
I said I'm not coming, that I have another assignment. He looked at me like this, I said, I said the ground should open and swallow me up. And then the principal in my school called me and said, we're proud of you. Thank you, sir. And that you are a student of this secondary school and you made first class in mathematics we're proud of you and my principal said we'll release you because they sponsored me to go to university we will release you go and i said thank you sir but i'm not going <laughs> what i said i'm not going why i said i have an assignment then my family in our town in Nigeria, my, the, the, the eldest in our family, a great man in politics and other things, he mentioned my name. <laughs> he said, the whole city is proud of you. And now we rejoice that you got first class mathematics. And they said, in the history, that's what they told me, I didn't know that, in the history of our, of our town, nobody had this. Now, move on. Go back. Do your PhD now. I said, no, sir. <laughs> Why? I said, I have an assignment. That was temptation. But I passed the temptation. <laughs> I had an assignment. That the assignment, that's why we're here now. Amen. You have an assignment. Amen. Temptation will come. Turn away from that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Eventually, I started lecturing at the University of Lagos. And the temptation was not ended yet. And our, you know, provost made arrangement with the University of London. He said, this man is too committed here to Christianity. But we're sending him, we will tell him that he has only three months course to do that, Chelsea College. And then, when he comes, take him. <laughs> so they didn't tell me in Nigeria. They just said I was going for three months. And I went. And whatever they wanted me to do there, I hurried up. Because by the grace of God, the brain was there to catch everything. <laughs> Within two months, I finished what I was to do for three months. And so... Over there in the UK, the provost there called me and said, did your provost in Nigeria tell you that when you finish this, you will spend another three years for mathematics education? I said, no way, sir. <laughs> I came for three months, and I finished what I should do for three months. In two months, I'm going back. What? You reject and drop this great thing. Other people are looking for this and you did not apply. And we give you this in London. Are you going to drop it? I said, I have an assignment. <laughs> you will receive temptation. And so I came back to Nigeria, got back to university, and then when I showed up in the provost's office in uh, Unilag, University of Lagos, he said, ah, you are back? <laughs> I said, yes, I am back. He said, did the provost there tell you we made arrangements and we paid, everything was paid for, you should stay there for the next three years. I said, he told me, then he himself said, is it because of your ministry here? I said, yes, sir, you got it. <laughs> you know, temptation will come this way, that way, or that way, but you will overcome. Yeah. 
you receive temptation like Christ. Amen. Number six, you refuse the treasures of corruption and compromise. Number seven, you repossess. Give me a good amen. amen. You know, I'm telling you from the depth of my heart, this morning, you will repossess. Amen. You repossess the truth and truthfulness in Christ. Amen. And with the new possession you have today, the truth, the treasure of heaven, Amen. the power, the provision of Christ, with what you repossess today, I make a prophecy over you. Amen. You will not be weary again. You will not be tired again. Amen. Everything you need in the ministry, as you move on, as you run on, as you preach, as you minister, everything you need, the power to preach, the power to heal the sick, and the power to even raise the dead, the power to be. Everything you are called to be, you possess everything today in Jesus' name. Rise up, rise up, rise up, and tell the Lord, I possess, I repossess, I have everything God says, I have. Your day has come. Open your mouth, talk to the Lord in prayer. Make up your mind.